Welcome into the Locked On Knicks podcast. I'm Gavin Shell. The New York Knicks just escaped the G League version of the Memphis Grizzlies. Jalen Brunson goes down with an ankle injury. What's the latest on him? And Dante DiVincenzo, the hero again. You are Locked On Knicks, your daily New York Knicks podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Knicks, and today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. And we wanted to thank you for making Locked On Knicks your first listen every Monday through Friday and sometimes on Saturday and Sunday. If you want to get it on the club, be sure to subscribe and hit that notifications bell on YouTube to ensure you never miss an episode. But if you're sitting there and saying I'm a little tired of seeing these guys face uh you can uh listen on the podcast side of things just hit that auto download function to ensure you never miss one um and we also wanted to remind you to uh check out our subtext uh that means uh you subscribe and we text you uh the latest information on the New York Knicks the latest rumors around the trade deadline this is certainly the time to get in on it and you can text us back and ask any questions that you have but who's talking to you i'm gavin shaw uh your favorite play-by-play broadcaster's favorite play-by-play broadcaster i have been uh covering the nba for about a decade now which feels insane um and i've seen few finishes that were nearly as crazy as this one the new york knicks leading by as many as 28 points in the third quarter by as many as 26 in the fourth uh, nearly blew it against a red hot Memphis Grizzlies side as they made their first seven threes of the period. Ended up finishing nine to 12 from distance, and it was a late Dante DiVincenzo dagger that ultimately held them off after they cut the lead to four inside the final two and a half minutes. But before we get into that, Jalen Brunson, the has to be the biggest story coming out of this one um, in the midst of another spectacular performance, a 17 point first quarter, 27 points, eight assists, three rebounds, three steals in 31 minutes, 11 to 21 from the field. Um, Pretty safe to say this game doesn't get as dicey as it did. If if Brunson doesn't get injured, Um, but driving to the rim with about six minutes left in the game so he tripped initially, like like right when he started going to the basket, kind of got up, regained his footing, then tried to attack again and, and just like completely lost his footing. It was almost like the court was slicked from sweat or something um, or his ankle was just ready to give out, which would be the more concerning thing. I'm going to choose to believe the first slip and the second slip weren't related uh, unless he was just exhausted, but falls and, and basically pins his right leg underneath his butt like it it looked really really dicey live and my initial fear was oh my god was that his Achilles just caving in and then you see the replay and you see it was his ankle turning and and if you're anything like me you are immediately a little bit less concerned about it um and, and I I thought more than anything else Clyde Clyde's head went to the same place like I'm like God, this guy is this guy's flexible because it didn't like obviously it turned his ankle, but his leg being pinned like under his body that didn't seem to hurt him that much. And and the ultimate conclusion here, um, or or as much of a conclusion as we've gotten so far, has been good news. Um, Jalen reportedly walked to the locker room and then walked out of the arena under his own power, um, no noticeable limp. Um, after the game, uh, Dante was asked by the media um, w- what he thought about Jalen's injury. And he said, look, I've, I've played with the guy forever. Like we have a shorthand. I just went up to him and said, you good? He said he was fine. Um, so everything to come out so far indicates this isn't going to be a big deal for Jalen Brunson. And, and maybe this was Tom Thibodeau um, in, in, in a rare, rare moment of, of, of clarity for him on this front, um, deciding that even, even if the Knicks were somehow going to blow this game, it was not worth further risking Jalen Brunson, um, or, or if you just had confidence they were going to be able to pull it out as they did. The Knicks uh, next play on Thursday against the Dallas Mavericks, that game on TNT. Got to imagine that is one Jalen Brunson is really going to want to play with. I also have to imagine the Knicks are going to be extraordinarily precautious, especially if OG Adenobi and Quentin Grimes are still out. And, and, and given the, the cushion they have Picked up by going 16 and three. We should take a second to marinate in that. 16 and three since the OG Ananobi trade. 
um, there's a world where, where they are just uh, hyper vigilant, uh, proactively safe and say, hey, Jalen, I, I don't care if you're looking 100 percent. We're going to sit you um, an extra couple of days just to be super ultra, ultra conservative um, with this injury. And, and that is probably ultimately the way I would go about it rather than uh, putting Jalen out there and saying, all right, go match Kyrie Irving, Luka Doncic um, and get us a win against your Dallas Mavericks. Dante DiVincenzo, um, wow, wow, 28 points per game over his last five in addition to five rebounds, 4.2 assists. Um, he has been spectacular. Like there is, there was no other way to frame it, and he's been so good, it, it makes me at least reevaluate the ceiling of, of what the Knicks have gotten here. And I've, I've been pretty consistent these last few weeks in calling him uh, one of the best contracts in basketball. Um, he continues to rise from maybe top, I don't know, 40 on that list and is looking more like someone who's top 15 on that list. I mean, that that's maybe more of an off-season podcast, but it's certainly something we could actually go ahead and rank. And I, I'm just wondering what he's going to be as a playoff guy at this point, because he is just completely unafraid. The three he hit after the Grizzlies like culminated this, this vicious run to get it all the way to 113 to 109. It was a 32 to six run for the Memphis Grizzlies. Again, the Knicks were up by 26, a 32 to six run. The Knicks were collectively peeing down their legs a little. We'll get into it. More next segment, but honestly, uh, Jalen uh, had a pretty decent role in allowing Memphis to come all the way back with some some sloppy defense, consistently leaving, um, I believe it's Jacob Gilliard, uh, wide open, and he was he was taking advantage. Memphis made seven straight threes. It was all going bad, and Dante DiVincenzo on a night where he was actually getting it done more from two than from three. Ten seconds left on the shot clock, dribbles into a 27-foot three, just casually drains it, 116. 109, next possession, Grizzlies score. Uh, Williams, Vince Williams Jr. is just crowding him out on the perimeter. Dante says, all right, that's fine. Like hard rip through, speeds by him, um, crosses over to the left side of the court, double pump, inside hand finish, right hand, left side to close out this game. Um, and he's, I, I'll, I'll say it again, like he is just totally unafraid right now. He recognized in that moment, hey, like I am, probably the most accomplished player on the court right now. And I don't think that's something that's ever been true in his NBA career. In fact, he was asked about this after the game and he said, look, like I've never, I've never gotten this usage inside the NBA. And then he went on to reiterate, but I don't really care about that. Like I came here to play with good players, to play on a good team. And you look at his, the, the track record of his career. And obviously he didn't get to choose where he was drafted, but started off um, in, in Milwaukee, uh, winning a championship is, is probably the, the sixth or seventh guy on that team. Uh, then like a brief interlude in Sacramento where his trade has a chance to decide where he wants to go again, goes to golden state to play with Steph and clay, where he's obviously never going to be a starting guard or, or was unlikely that he was consistently going to be a starting guard come playoff time. Um, comes to New York where, where the Knicks and, and Tom Thibodeau in this front office say, hey, we love you. We'd love to have you. We have your boys here, Josh Hart, Jalen Brunson, Ryan Archidiacono. Um, but you are not going to start because we have this guy, Quentin Grimes. We're super high on. He's younger than you. He's a better defender. He looks like he might be a better three-point shooter. Um, you're going to be coming off the bench. And, and by the way, we also have this guy, Emmanuel Quickly, who, who should have won sixth man of the year last year. So I, I wouldn't expect to have a huge role here. And there were... There were just undeniably other teams, other places he could have gone where he would have gotten to do what he's doing now this entire season. Like if he if he said, hey, I'm going to go, I'm going to go be a, a Washington Wizard. I'm going to go play with Wemby on the Spurs. Like he he might be averaging 20 points per game this year. And if he had, if he had, let's just say he went to the Spurs and took like a two year deal and, and then came out and was a free agent. I mean, you're looking at someone who profiles as, I don't know. I think I think when the TV deals up, like is he, like should he be a twenty million dollar a year player? Considering someone like Duncan Robinson makes seventeen, and Dante seems to be a similar shooter who's a better defender and can do even more off the dribble. Um, maybe that's basing too much off of what's been like a forty six game sample size so far. 
but that's just who Dante seems to be. And the fact that the Knicks have him for what? I don't know. What is it? Like 11, $12 million a year? Like not even that. Um, it's it, it's pretty spectacular as a contract. And, and his confidence off the dribble is escalating. Like he he had a play where, where him and iHeart ran a pick and roll and just the way he was able to stretch it out ensure two stayed with him with, with his with his shooting and his gravity recognizing that he has that now and able to leverage it to just throw this on the move bounce pass threaded between two defenders to iHeart cutting to the rim ended up being a short roll pass to Precious Achua for a dunk um like showed that same patience on the fast break where he knew he had a two on one um with Precious and and just just waited out the defender like like that that is what you have to do in a two-on-one, make the defender commit to a decision and, and, and then do the opposite. So, so once the defender crowded him, just threw a bullet over his head to a chew. But I, I just can't emphasize how many players, especially non-point guards in that situation, would have chucked a shot or or panicked and tried to throw a pass too early. Like Dante just stringing it out, like patient ball handling. Um, and then over and over again, attacking the rim. Like this is a guy who was, I mean, it was similar to rookie Emmanuel quickly. He was allergic to the basket earlier this season um, and and just like with the shot clock running out, like hard downhill drives, like running layups at this nasty reverse layup. Um, I think it was on Gigi Jackson where he just flipped it up at the last possible second, um, got to the line to end that 18 to one run on what ultimately like this was, this was actually the possession. Jalen Brunson got hurt. Brunson before he got hurt, made a technical free throw. Um, Dante drives, gets the line, goes one to two. Um, I heart keeps it alive. Dante hits a corner three, like, like just, just a sense of the moment. And, and for someone who simply has not had a great track record in the playoffs for his career, I, I'm, I'm wondering what this ultimately is going to look like in the postseason. And, and, and look, the, the caveat to that 27, five and four he's put up is, is it, it's come uh, outside of the Lakers game, which was like eat pretty um, easily. Well, Okay, the Pacers game was his least efficient game. The Lakers game was his second least efficient game. Like the Lakers were the only good defense they played over this five game stretch. The Hornets, the Jazz, the Pacers, the Grizzlies. So four of the five like worst defenses in basketball. Um, if I'm not doing my research, there, I'm sorry. But four of the five teams, I suppose, uh, without looking it up in the moment, are the worst defenses in basketball. Like you have to give it that caveat in terms of saying like, all right, this is just who Dante DiVincenzo is. He's a 27 point scorer. Like no, probably not. Um, but he's a fantastic three-point shooter. And I think the silver lining of all the injuries the Knicks have had is that he is going to bring just a different level of confidence into the playoffs, knowing that he has this in him. And I, I think there's going to be a capacity there. It's like in a big moment, like game seven against the Miami, two minutes left, tied at 96. Dante's, I mean, not just the confidence to take a wide open three, to take a contested three, to pump and drive and make the next play. Um, if you didn't know he was fearless from his time in Villanova, from winning a title, from playing with Golden State, like he, he is fearless at this point. I think the Knicks really, really have something in Dante DiVincenzo. All right, let's get more into Jalen Brunson's performance, the late breakdown against the Grizzlies and, and, and a big night offensively, at least for both Isaiah Hardenstein and Precious Achua. But before we do that, um, I have to tell you about our buddies over at eBay Motors eBay Motors, passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophies? Also, what keeps your ride or die alive? eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. And now it's time to talk about our good friends over at Prize Picks. So you might be at home asking, hey, what is Prize Picks? I'll tell you. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with over 3 million members. We're the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers. So on most of these daily fantasy sites, you're going up against dudes who went to MIT and then said, hey, 
I'm going to save some cash on rent and move into my mom's basement. They are grinding tape. They are grinding numbers. They know how to use Excel. You are not competing against that. The good news is on prize picks, you don't even have to. You just pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. And now it's demon time on prize picks. You can win up to a hundred times your money with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into a thousand dollars. Demons and goblins are the newest and most exciting way to play at price pick squares marked with red demons or green goblins get you different payouts. You can now win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. So go to pricepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use code locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Once again, go to pricepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use our code locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to a hundred bucks. Price picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All righty. Let's keep it rolling here on locked on Knicks. Um, before he got hurt, uh, another for the most part, for the most part, outstanding effort by Jalen Brunson. And for those of you who were, uh, Paranoid that the Los Angeles Lakers had had figured out the secret to stop at Brunson and it was all over, um, at least against the G League Grizzlies. That was not the case. 17 points in the first quarter. Brunson absolutely cooking from the get go. I love the way Tom Thibodeau started off this game, um, getting him the ball on the move off ball screen from Isaiah Hartenstein. Brunson curls around it, catches, speeds in for a little runner. Um, it, it can't just be stagnant with all the guys the Knicks had had out. Again, you give you give the um the defense like a, a stable target. You you just say, hey Jalen, like go go dribble it up and, and make something happen. Like they're gonna be able to send double teams, they're gonna be able to send triple teams, they're gonna be able to crowd, they're gonna be able to recover. Um, with, with the non-shooting that the Knicks have on the floor right now, it is not going to look good. But instead, you get Jalen the ball on the run, you get a scrambled defense. Um, you, you're going to create some panic. And whether that's Jalen just having an opportunity to go at someone one-on-one, -on -one, get to the rim and finish, or if it's an opportunity um, for him to just collapse the defense and kick it out, um, things are going to look a little bit better when he's on the move. Ended up having eight points in the first three and a half minutes or so, like like had this, this beautiful uh, short middle fadeaway. Like he, he just, he has that shot down on a line. Like even when it doesn't switch through, always seems to roll in, then a pull up three absolutely toasted Vince Williams early on just this rapid fire acceleration drive had a Kobe Jordan type of move to end the first quarter half spin middle spin back fade away elbow jumper it was just a thing of beauty his passing stood out to me as this game went along like threaded the needle to Dante DiVincenzo through two defenders on a fast break like late in the third euro step last second no look whip to the opposite wing to Deuce McBride for three um, his savvy in the pick and roll continues to really stand out, just kind of butt bumping a defender to keep the trail guy off of him and like away from contesting the pass, then zipping it inside to Isaiah Hartenstein for an inside finish. Um, down the stretch of this game, like after coming back in when the Grizzlies started that run, like he was sneakily responsible for a decent amount of, of what Memphis did. Going up 18 to one, had one really bad turnover. And then on two different plays, just totally lost Jacob Gilliard. Um, and he got back to back threes on them, like hit him and I Heart at one point were, were both guarding the same guy. Um, and Gilliard was just wide open um, to get that going. And then Brunson just like off the ball had like a really inexplicably bad double team. It was just left chasing the basketball. And, and he had like, I, I hate to say it, like a, a classic Julius Randle moment where he just kind of like flipped his hands up and was like, what the F are we doing when it, by all accounts, unless Tibbs just called that double by the sideline and someone else was supposed to rotate over. And that, that's the one thing we don't get the benefit of, of knowing um, doing this pod. So if that's the case, apologies to Jalen, but it, it, it was, it was his fault. So that that's just something that has to get cleaned up a little bit. And, and I mean, this is a good learning moment for the Knicks that um, similar to the first game against the Grizzlies, they can't, take anything for granted as good as they are, as good as they've been playing. Um, you, you, you screw around against an NBA team, even with one <laughs> that's playing very few full-time NBA players right now. Um, you are going to run into some trouble in, in Memphis. Again, that 32 to six run start off 18 to one um, had an opportunity to win this game late 113, 109. It was Dante DiVincenzo's heroics late Isaiah Hartenstein um, 
getting it done defensively to help save the Knicks in this game. I mean, he, he had one of his better games of the year, 17 points, eight rebounds, three assists, three blocks, two steals, seven of eight shooting, three for four from the line. Um, pretty close to as aggressively offensively as I've ever seen him. So it was actually the second highest field goal game of his career. Took nine back in 2019 on the Rockets um, and, and just got it done in a variety of ways, like running the floor hard for a putback slam. Um, when when Jalen missed in transition, just, I mean, what you always love about him, like the guy doesn't take anything for granted. Um, I mentioned that short roll pass to pressure Sachua. Like he, he's, he's doing more and more of that as the Knicks just are, are desperate for someone else to take on the playmaking burden. Um, like taking advantage of switches, which you, you just normally don't see him get the ball in those situations. The Knicks guards in general are not really good about feeding their bigs like quickly um, when when they get someone who's way tinier than them on a switch. Um, and, and this time, I think it was Brunson just got it to him and he had Roddy pinned and, and just beat him with like a righty pivot into a jump hook. Um, bully ball and PNR for an and one had another dive for an and one was just torturing. Uh, I believe it's Jemison on the Grizzlies um, late in the game was, was just sublime defensively, like ran down in transition to get a SWAT, um, a block and a steal to um, seal off like down to DiVincenzo's three is as, as kind of the winning play of this game. Like didn't let Memphis make one final burst in the last 90 seconds ago, just a fantastic two way effort for the most part. The same could be said of Precious Achua. We'll get into the remaining Knicks and some breaking news on Isaiah Hartenstein's best friend, Mitchell Robinson. Seems like he will be back sooner than we think. Um, but before we get into all that, I want to tell you about our buddies over at Game Time. All right, guys, the beauty of Game Time is you, you no longer have to worry about buying tickets to the next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, and comedy and theater events near you with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. I got an opportunity to use Game Time uh, for the first time recently when I was in Phoenix, and, and it just so happened um, I was there visiting my girlfriend, but the Knicks were in town. I said, all right, I got to find a way to get her and uh, a couple close friends out there to the game. I said, well, somebody got to go, but game time was so cool. They let me see the view from my seat before. And it was tickets. I normally wouldn't have bought. I would have thought they were a little high, but I saw the view and I was saying, you know what? Center court. That's actually not bad. I am going to splurge. And the other reason I had so much confidence is because of the game time guarantee. So what's the game time guarantee? I will tell you, the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. We find tickets in the same section and row for less game time will credit you 110% of the difference. So if you go with game time, there's literally no way you will not ultimately get the best deal. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code locked on for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. You can create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, uh, let's, before we, we'll, we'll wrap up some final notes on the game, but before we do that, um, I wanted to mention uh, some pretty substantial news that came from uh, intrepid Knicks beat reporter Tom Thibodeau yesterday. That's right, he gave it up himself. Um, Tibbs noted uh, in, in shoot-around yesterday that Mitchell Robinson is progressing, and the plan is for him to start on-court activities after the All-Star break. Um, so that is fantastic news. If you are a fan of this team, I think the only way it can backfire is if the Knicks immediately try to give Mitchell Robinson his starting job back. But I'm actually not super fearful of that. The history under Tom Thibodeau is that he's more than willing to let someone lose their starting spot because of an injury. If I'm remembering correctly, that's initially what happened with Evan Fournier. That happened with Kemba Walker um, um, when he signed. Man, doesn't that feel like like this? I, I'm 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 just pausing for a second here because like Kemba Walker and Evan Fournier was was two seasons ago. That feels like a different lifetime when you look at how different this roster is now. I mean, just I'm gonna I'm gonna clap it up. Leon Rose, front office, great job, incredible work. Um they they can't start Mitchell Robinson right away. This team is playing too well with Isaiah Hartenstein. Hartenstein just offers you more flexibility as a defender. 
um, slightly more flexibility as a defender and just dramatically more flexibility offensively. Um, he's not the offensive rebounder that Mitchell Robinson is, but he has been one of the five best in the NBA since Mitch went down. He's not the rim protector that Mitch is, but he's, again, probably top 20% or so in the NBA in that category in terms of his ability to alter shots, in terms of his ability to block shots. Um, just a fantastic two-way player and what he gives you as a passer is, is just, and and with slightly more spacing, incrementally more spacing than Mitchell Robinson is just desperately needed right now and more needed than what Mitch does is just kind of an overwhelming Goliath um, at the rim on both ends of the floor. What does that mean though? It means that in probably 20 minutes a night, Mitchell Robinson um, can be the most dominant um, backup defensive center in, in recent NBA history. Like he is going to overwhelm bench units. If you thought he was a great offensive rebounder against starters, uh, just, just wait until you see what he does against backups and it will give him time to recover, to slowly work his way back up to a hundred percent. And I think as good as the Knicks have been, um, it's a window for them to start um, again, dramatically winning bench minutes in, instead of just playing even and let their starting lineup um, carry the way as has been the case for most of the 16 and three stretch um, since the OG and an OB trade. Speaking of OG and an OB, Tom Thibodeau was uh, mostly pretty evasive um, in terms of detailing what um, exactly his injury is and why he's been day to day for 12 days now. Um, all we can do is hope that the Knicks and, and, and to be clear, this is, this is my thought on it and my instinct on it. And I'm, I'm not panicked about this yet. Like I, I think it's ultimately a case of the Knicks being super duper conservative. And I think this elbow issue is something that normally would probably just linger the rest of the season and through the postseason because the Knicks have built up such a cushion with how good they've been since the trade because they have such an easy schedule and, and this unprecedented stretch of home games leading up to the all-star break. Um, they are, they're kind of milking every day they can in, 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 that's that was I, I wish I phrased that differently. I'm sorry. Um, they they are stretching every day they can to try to get him more rest, to try to get him to as close to 100 percent as humanly possible. Um, and and just taking out um any risk of him aggravating it and it turning into something more serious when they just don't ultimately need him to play to win games right now. So that's my instinct there. Maybe it's worse. Uh, Quentin Grimes, I'm a little bit more worried about. With was still. No reporting about that knee injuries. If you remember, like he had something similar at the start of last season where it just lingered, lingered, lingered. We got nothing. We got nothing. And then eventually he came back and looked fine. So hopefully that is the case with Quinn Grimes again. But my my overall summary um, would be despite Jalen Brunson going down, Josh Hart, I'm um, having a, a knee issue late in this game. I am I am optimistic, maybe against all logic on on the Knicks um, injury front. Um, quick shout out again to uh, Precious Achua, who had statistically probably his second best game as a Nick, maybe his best overall game as a Nick. 17 points, five rebounds, three assists, three steals, also hit a three, eight of 13 from the field. Um, I, I thought down the stretch of the game, I didn't really like the way he played, like had a turnover, was like a little bit lost defensively. Obviously, th this is not his fault, but every time he's out there as a four, um, it allows defenses to just pack the paint and, and make things at least a bit more challenging for Jalen Brunson and Dante DiVincenzo. Obviously, the Grizzlies weren't the team that was totally qualified to execute that, but um, you, you you saw it like early in this game where they were just leaving Precious wide open and like Josh Hart would drive, kick it out to him and a possession would just die. Again, that's not his fault. He probably should be playing backup center, not starting power forward or at the very least backup power forward, but he did some good stuff again, hit, hit that one three, had two nice cuts for jams, like quick seven points in the first quarter, like had a steal that led to a run out and a fast break dunk, um, took a step back from New Orleans status with a tough catch on a double deflection under the rim, huge tip in um, with three minutes to go after the Grizzlies cut it to nine. So he did some good stuff. Shout out to Taj Gibson, uh, getting an opportunity to play against his old buddy, Derek Rose. That was cool to see in the year of our Lord, 2024. And then final thing, final thing, a uh, special, special shout out to uh, Mike Breen and Clyde Frazier, 25 year silver anniversary quarter century calling Knicks games, um, an incredible accomplishment. And I say it um, maybe not as often as I should, but I think a pretty good amount um, if you're a Knicks fan, never take those two for granted. Like it's similar to what the, the Dodgers had obviously for a longer period for 50 years. Like we're presumably not getting 50 years at this point. And those guys with, with someone like Vince Scully, um, similar to like, I, I know people hate this reference, but what the Nets have in, in Iron Eagle, um, what the Knicks had for the longest time in, in Marv Albert, um, to have like arguably the guy at the apex of your sport 
doing these games in addition to arguably the best player in in the history of the franchise um is is pretty extraordinary and rare and for them to just so clearly be two of the best people like i i i went to clyde's basketball camp growing up but i could i i mean for those of you and i and it seems like everyone's met him like this he's, he's just mr nick and he's he is the ultimate ambassador of this team even even for the for the 20 years where, where things were going terribly um he's just one of the best one of the warmest people in the world on top of being incredibly funny and good at his job. And, and Mike, um, hopefully, hopefully we'll get him on this pod at some point. Um, but from friends who have interacted with him, you just hear over and over again, like who he is on air is who he is as a person, which is just one of the most intelligent, one of the, one of the warmest, one of the kindest, just, just someone who like you can, you can never have met him and and you can almost see him as as a mentor and and someone to like I I guess a role model like for me personally someone who's trying to do the same job like like trying to to hopefully be be him one day um like he like on, on top of the fact that he is just absurdly ridiculously skilled at 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 what he does and for and for my money the best the best NBA play by play man of all time. Like he's also like up there for the best person to ever hold the job. And again, to have, to have both of them and, and for, for them to so clearly have, have so much genuine love for each other and, and genuine non manufactured chemistry. Um, it is, it is a gift for Knicks fans everywhere that we should not take for granted because it's not, I, I don't know how many years Clyde has, has left to doing this, whether it's, Two, three, four, five. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm underestimating the guy, and he'll he'll be like Yubi Brown, um, doing this in in into his 90s, and and Knicks fans would be um luckier for it, and would be better off for it, and 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 same with Mike. Um, like hopefully he's doing this job another 20 years, but I I, I think in all likelihood we're not going to have that. So every every game, every season we get of those two, we should appreciate because it, it's it's not likely to ever be this good again in our lifetime. So shout out to Mike Breen, shout out to Clyde Frazier. Congratulations on 25 years. Shout outs to the New York Knicks, uh, 16 and three over their last 19 games have won 10 of their last 11. They're really freaking good. Hopefully they get healthy soon. Hopefully things with Jalen Brunson aren't too bad. Uh, but whatever the case is, we will be here to cover it and, and take you through the trade deadline. Uh, super fun pod, uh, coming up tomorrow morning, we're going to go over some fake trades. We're going to give you our, our predictions on what ultimately happens with the New York Knicks and answer some of your questions. But until then, I'm Gavin Shaw and talk to you very, very soon on Locked on Knicks.